Now, you'll, no you'll notice that the S31 Outlet 1 is, is here, and I'm going to click Done, and that is going to be in the office. Now, I, I, I'm going to pretend as though this were my living room, and I'm going to set it up in my living room. But what I want to do is I want to go to this, uh, to this device, and I want to edit the device because I want to name it something that actually means something to me. So I'm going to name it Living Room Light. I'm going to save that. Now you can see that it's now Living Room Light. And we're going to test this to make sure that this actually works. So I'm going to um, turn back on the picture. Probably not the, the thing that most seniors would want. Most seniors would want these applications coming in um, so that when you have a light on, let's say you have a light on in the living room, and you come in in the middle of the night, you know, it will light up and light the way for you so that you don't stumble over something. And from a, from a senior perspective, we're trying to think about the things that, that you know, might actually matter to you and, and how you would use this type of automation. Now, I'm going to try and set up uh, a, a new device here. And again, uh, I have this this motion detector, and it's been around for a while, so I'm not sure if it's going to set up or not, but we're going to give it a try. So I'm going to add a device, and I'm going to scan nearby. I'm going to select the hub. Here we go next. And let's see if this uh, Echo Link um, motion detector is, is found. And if it's not found, we'll go back in and see if we can search for it by the name of the manufacturer, which sometimes you have to do. And also, if you, if you when you get something like this, when you buy it brand new and you get it out of the box, it's going to come with instructions. And you want to take those instructions and understand what it's asking you to do because it will most likely give you instructions on exactly how to set the device up in SmartThings. Always when you're buying, uh, buying pieces for your SmartThings system, Always look for the Smart Things uh, logo and name on the box because almost every device that uh, that you will see has that uh, has that Smart Things logo on it uh, to allow you to uh, to do that. So it did not find it. So what we'll do is we will go back and we will do partner devices and we'll look for. Echo Link, and there you go, there it is, and we'll do Motion Sensor, and it is an Echo Link Z-Wave, I happen to know, we're going to do Next, and it should find this, sometimes you, again, if it's been, a, if it's an, a device that's been, uh, that's been uh, set up for a while, or, you know, needs to be set up, you may have to reset it, um, and get it, uh, to get it to show up. And in this case, there's a little button inside this, uh, inside this, this piece, right, uh, that I just click, and it then allows me to reset that, and it should show up for me uh, so that I can then uh, add it to the, to the smart things. So while that's searching, what we'll do is we'll talk a little bit about about what the, the ideas are for, you know, for what you want to do with things, right? What do you want, what do you want to accomplish? And I think planning for what you want to accomplish, if you, what you're planning to do is to add motion detection in your living room, then you want to figure out which lights you want to include in that. And if they're, you know, standalone lights that you can plug into the switch like I did here, that's very easy to accomplish. If there are lights uh, that are in uh, that are in the wall, if there are switches in the wall that you want to use instead, then that may be a little bit more complicated. Some of you may be electricians or may know about electricity. Uh, some of you may not. So you want to, uh, if if it's something you don't feel comfortable with, hire an electrician. Have that electrician put the switch in, and then you can get it set up in Smart Things. Now, uh, so this motion detector is not is not uh, giving us such a good uh, a good deal here. So we're gonna 
we're going to forget about the motion sensor for the time being, but I did want to talk to you a little bit about the different kinds of devices that you can set up in SmartThings, right? So this uh, list shows you pretty, pretty well. You know, you have got garage doors. If you have a fairly new garage door, you can set that up in SmartThings. Uh, motion sensor, open, closed sensor, siren, water leak sensor. We have a number of water leak sensors that are already set up. So we have um, a number of different things that we can do here. But I want to go ahead and show you an automation that we can do with this. And, and that way I want to show you a basic automation that you could then do uh, with this particular, uh, this particular piece, right? So one of the things I, I neglected to do with this li living room light, though, I neglected when I edited it, I neglected to put it in the right room. And that's probably something that you want to make sure that you do, is to put it in the correct room. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change this over to, uh, to living room. And I'm going to save that. And you'll notice uh, now that it's in the living room, uh, I have to change my, uh, my, device, my uh, location to living room to then see it. We're going to turn it back on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to routines to set up an automation. So if I go to routines, you'll see that I have a number of routines already set up in here. But what I want to do is, so let's say, again, when you're planning your routines, you've gotten your device set up, you've gotten smart things set up, and what you want to do is to plan what you're going to do with your, with your smart things. What, are, what kind of automations are you going to do? Are you going to do... Uh, the lights are going to come on at 6.30 in the morning when you get up. Are the lights going to go off at a certain time? Are they going to go on and off based on motion or the newer, uh, the newer presence sensors, which don't rely on motion? I would highly recommend getting the presence sensors over the motion detectors uh, just because motion detectors. Let me, let me tell you a little story about that. Um, so I'm a, I'm a uh, home automation husband. My wife has been very very uh, nice to to put up with me for so long doing this but there was a time when we first got started where lights would come off come on randomly and it kind of made her a little mad right so we we jokingly referred to her as an automation wife um, and you don't want your spouse being upset by the automation right so you really do want to uh, to, to work with with uh, planning what you're going to do with it and how you're going to do with it and where are you going to do it with, right? So you don't want to do it. In, you don't want to do it in bathrooms generally. Although I have had lights that go on and off when we come into the bathroom, so I can see where to go at night. But women don't like that, so you know, let's let's be respectful of of the spouse. But uh, we do have automations that turn on and off lights in our bedroom based on voice automation. And so the good thing about smart things is not only does it work by automating your lights, and I'm going to show you that in just a moment. Not only does it work by automating your lights through a normal course of events, right, as we, you know, look at, uh, you know, what we're doing with smart things, not only does it have these all these automations that you can do in here, but you can also set it up with Alexa or with, uh, with Google Assistant, and it will work with either one. And we're going to have some videos that I will link to, uh, again, showing you exactly how to do that, how to set it up in Alexa, how to set it up in Google, so that you will then be able to use your voice to turn lights on and off. And that way you don't necessarily have to have motion or presence sensor. You can just turn things off with a name. So this is very, that's a very handy thing to have, have set up and certainly something that most seniors would like to have because, again, we have a tendency to stumble over things in the dark. So, uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how to set up a basic routine now. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go into Routines, and we're going to click the plus button at the top, and you'll see we have, then have Create the Routine and If Then statement, right? So the if is whatever triggers the statement right, whatever triggers the routine. And that if is, let's take a look by clicking on it. There are various things that you can set up, right? You can manually run it. You can do it according to time or a device status, like if you had a motion detector or a door 
sensor that would open. When the door opens, you can make something happen. Or by when you're in or out of the house, because you can, as long as you have SmartThings app on your phone, you can have what's called a geofence and allow yourself to come and go out of your home, and it will know that you are either home or not home, and it will kick off routines based on that. And that's member location and location mode. And then you have weather, which is very uh, helpful when you have watering system outside uh, that's hooked into smart things as well. And then security mode. So we have, you know, if you use it for security as well, uh, you will also have that option. So we're going to do uh, a time, and you'll notice at the top we have the time, and we can set that time based on whatever time we want it to be. I'm going to set it to 6, 15 a.m., but I could, if I chose to do so, set it to sunrise, and I could set it to, you know, 10 minutes after sunrise. And you might ask me, well, how does this, how does my phone, how does this app know that it's sunrise? Well, because it's a cloud app, it checks the sunrise time wherever you're at, wherever you set this, whatever your time zone is, whatever your location is, it knows the, t the sunrise and sunset based on that location. So if you want it to, to happen at sunrise or at sunset, uh, you can do that. Uh, you can also have it uh, as an all-day routine or as a time period, as you see. Um, so you could uh, run it at a specific time. Now, the other thing that I want you to notice on this is where it says at the bottom, repeat every day. So if I want to change it to only run on weekdays, I can uncheck Saturday and Sunday, and now it's repeat weekdays. Same thing goes for uh, running it only on the weekends. We uncheck uh, the weekdays, and it becomes repeat weekends. So I'm going to, uh, and then if you just want it to run one day a week, you just set the one day a week. So I'm going to have it repeat weekdays, and I'm going to have it at the time of 6.15 a.m. It's going to turn on. And so I'm going to click Done. And you'll notice here that we have a routine is basically starting at 6.15 a.m., and then we can add additional conditions here if that's what we want to do. But we're just setting up a simple automation. We'll go into more detail about conditions and, and how you can set up different things such as geofencing in later videos, which I, again, I will put a, a link in for. So then you want, that's the trigger. That's what happened. When is this going to happen? When is it going to happen? What's going to trigger it to go off? And then what happens when it's triggered to go off? So what do you want this to do? So we're going to come in and you can see we could have control devices, which is what we're going to do. We're going to turn on the light, turn on and off the light, uh, or notify someone, change this location mode, run other routines. So we could run other routines from this or change the security mode. So what we're going to do is we're going to control devices. And there, because we know that this light we set up is in our living room and it's called living room light, we're going to click that and we're going to click next. And you're going to see now that the living room light has the ability to turn on, turn off, or turn on or off. And we can auto turn off the light after it's been turned on for so long, right? So we can choose uh, our time for auto turn off. Uh, but what we want to do this time is we want to turn, uh, we want to go turn on or off the living room light because it may be on and we want to turn it off. And so we want to test that. Uh, leave it at that. We're going to let it turn it on, on and off uh, uh, on a scheduled time. But what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, change the name on here. We could say, leave this, turn on or off, turn off, uh, living room light, turn on and off. We want something that's descriptive because believe me, after you've been doing routines for a while and you have a lot of devices, you want to know what this routine is doing. You don't want some cryptic name because otherwise you may forget what it does and that's when you start getting into that spouse irritation again, right? So what we want to do is we want to, uh, you know, call it living room and we'll say turn on, let's see, uh, slash off, right? So we will, um, we will call this and we'll save this. And now this is in our list of of 
routines and we can then uh, run it uh, as needed or we can edit it as well, right? So if we go in uh, to this, uh, we can also edit it. Uh, and let's say that I don't want it to turn on uh, at that particular time. Let's say I want to, uh, let's say I want to manually run it. And I'm gonna save this. And so now uh, I can, and you'll notice at the top, Alexa automatically added a scene based on Alexa stop. Alexa stop. The problem with Alexa, right? If you say the name, suddenly the genie pops up. Uh, we want to name these things, and we want to keep in mind that as we're uh, as we're naming them or putting them together. We don't want to change things kind of willy-nilly um, because they do have a tendency uh, to, uh, to break if you change things. Uh, so just keep that in mind and, and try, to, uh, try to plan out what you want to do with these things and, and learn the technology by playing with it. And that's the best way I can tell you to, to learn smart things is by setting things up playing with it, seeing what works for you, what doesn't. And, you know, learning technology doesn't have to be scary. It can be a, a fun experience, and setting up home automation can be actually pretty fun and easy to do if you take the right approach. And that right approach is planning what you're going to do, getting the right things in place, getting the right devices for, your, for what you're going to do, and then getting those set up in a manner that allows you to get those automations done, that planning. So remember, it's all about taking, taking it one step at a time and getting all the information you need and doing all the planning up front. And then you'll find that you will have automation in your home. And when, once you get used to having automation, you'll never want to go back. If you found this video helpful, please view the video on the left and we'll have more great content. And we hope to see you soon. Please like, share, and subscribe. Tell your friends about it, and we'll be seeing you soon.